Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 21. 21, old enough to drink. Oh wow, okay, we went there. So uh, on this episode, we'll be talking about, we know we're really close to that 15, 20 game mark, so that's kind of where we say we were gonna start panicking or not panicking, so yep. there we um, are. We'll talk about some of the line combos since they've been kind of jumbled around last week mm -hmm. or so. And uh, the story of our season, even though it's only been 14 games so far. Mm -hmm. And what else? We got? Uh, oh, and we have the Google Home that we're going to be giving away, so we'll put the link in the description down below so that you guys can click on that. Yep. So you ready to start the show? Ready. Good, because I'm Ron Burgundy, and this is what's happening in San Jose today. You're not Ron. <laughs> no, I'm not Ron. Uh, yeah, obviously that opening uh, courtesy of the, um, what do you call this Mustache? Thing? No, it's not a mustache yet. So I'm trying to figure out, a caterpillar maybe, I don't know, we'll get there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so raising awareness, uh, obviously the month of November, Movember, mustache only, that's the MO, and um, just raising some awareness for uh, men's health issues. So I wanted to go ahead and set up a, I don't know if it's like a page really, but on Movember.com, you can go there as well if you want to set up your own page. Um, we're taking essentially donations that will go to a charitable cause that will benefit men's health issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll put that link in the description down below. Yeah. Uh, also wanted to bring attention to the Sharks Foundation charity bags that they're doing. They've got two different tiers. I think one's 250 and another's 1,000. And you get all kinds of Sharks merchandise and cool stuff that's inside of all these, uh, these duffel bags. And it goes, to, again, to a really good cause, Sharks mm -hmm. Foundation. So. Again, we'll put that link in the description down below. Yep. Uh, what was the next thing you wanted to bring up there? Uh, let's do an injury update. Oh, real yeah, quick. okay. So you were at practice yesterday or today? Today, yeah, today. today. So um, an unfortunately, uh, witnessed a an injury, <laughs> <laughs> sort of. I was in the middle of a tweet. I was going up and down. So uh, you know, Drew Mendo would be upset with me, the head on the swivel, right? So. <laughs> Uh, I, I looked up because I heard some oohs in the in the crowd. There actually was a crowd at practice, which was kind of cool. And uh, unfortunately, Evander Kane was face down on the ice with both both gloves uh, covering his face, and a puck had apparently hit him in the lip, and he went down. So they covered it up with uh, just a towel, and he skated off under his own power. It was just a, a bloody lip, essentially. He'd get some stitches, and apparently from uh, Pete DeBoer saying that he's no worse for the wear. Should see him uh, next game. Shouldn't be a problem. So no, no real concern there. Uh, we did see in the last game, Hurdle take a headshot. It no. wasn't uh, intentional, I don't no. think, yeah. No, in fact, he, he was talking about how, um, or DeBoer had talked to him, mm -hmm. and, and Hurdle knew he shouldn't have made that move right inside the blue line, right. so he kind of put himself in a vulner vulnerable position. Um, it wasn't malicious, the guy, it happened so fast. I mean, we're watching it in slow-mo on yeah. replay, so it's a little different. The point of contact was the shoulder to his head, but Hurdle kind of put his head down and, and moved and kind of put himself in a bad position. So mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, he's going to be, he's probably going to be out. I think he's going to miss the next game, maybe two games. Um, and that's unfortunate because he was really starting to get rolling, mm -hmm. in, especially on that line um, with the other guys. So he'll be missed, but uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later in this in today's show about the depth and the sharks and why yeah. they're so good. But Yeah, and, and DeBoer had mentioned, you know, it doesn't seem like it's a, a serious injury, mm -hmm. and he got a little bit of flack, I think, on, on Twitter for saying that a head injury is not serious when all injury, head injuries should be considered serious. I don't think that's what he meant. I think he just meant that he, you'll see Hurdle back sooner than later. I think that was the extent of, of what he yeah. meant by saying it's not serious. So um, give him a break, guys. <laughs> yeah. I also think he didn't want to use the word concussion. Yeah, um, it's a keyword. Yeah, it's a big keyword. So I, I think he's just shying away from that yeah. a little bit. But yeah. yeah. Well, we are at the uh, panic, don't panic point. We had talked about yep. 15, 20 games uh, being the area that we uh, kind of want to judge the team and how they're going to go and how they're trending. We, are, we kept saying it's too early, it's too early, it's too early. Now we're kind of to the point where it's not too early anymore. We yeah. can kind of make an assessment. We're at 14 games. The next week's going to bring a couple more games, so we'll be right in the mix. So uh, 15, 20 games, how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling okay. I'm not, um, I don't know, neutral in a way. Okay. Like I, I don't hate it and I don't love it. What I do love is they have points in 10 of those 14 games. I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, so more than three-quarters of their games, they're they're coming away with something, and that's where they're going to start pulling away over time. So if they can keep that kind of 
stretch or keep that going, mm -hmm. that pace, um, obviously they're going to make playoffs. I don't really necessarily think uh, the seedings really matter as much anymore. Um, you're playing, at least in the first round, you're guaranteed to play your divisional opponent. Yeah. So, I mean, unless you're the lowest, the lowest seed, then you'd be the wild card and might not. But most likely you're going to be playing a divisional opponent. Won't have to travel as much. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I think um, two, of those, two of those overtime losses in the column were shootout <laughs> losses. And they, shootouts are, are just, I hate them. What? They're so dumb. Yeah, you I hate them? I know, it's, it's a shocker, right? Like, nobody <laughs> knew this about me. Um, it, those guys, you know, they win the shootout in those two games. That's an extra two points. Now the Sharks are tied with Calgary and behind them in row. So um, then everyone's going to be talking about how great position they are right. in, right? And it's it came down to two skills competitions to figure out if they got those points or not. So that's why I don't like it. Yeah. Um, but I, I think they're doing all right. Um, their goals against are mediocre. They're getting better, I think. I think uh, Jones is playing a lot better. Um, it took him a little while to settle in. Mm -hmm. I think Dell is still a very consistent, great backup. Yep. Um, Still no goalie controversy. I don't see Dell <laughs> taking over as a starter. Right. I don't. I don't. Uh, he's he's playing well for a backup, yeah. and it's nice that you can throw in a guy in um, cold almost in a way, and and expect to get points and right. not go. Oh well, here's a throwaway night tonight. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I agree. And and uh, speaking of of Jones, I think the last six games or so, it was I think Curtis had mentioned this. Mm -hmm. He's five zero and one. So uh, it, it, you might have started off poorly at the beginning of the year. I, again, I think a lot of that has to do with defensive breakdowns too. But, um, you know, he's, he's bounced back at this point, I would say. So Jones looking really good. Again, 5-0-1, you, you nothing to complain about there. Yeah. Um, the one thing that people are complaining a little bit about, Eric Carlson. <laughs> so I think what you're going to find is at, at some point, hopefully very soon, because, again, that 15-20 game mark, that's where we're starting to, to judge and see how, how the team is trending, not just the team, but the players individually. And I'd like to see Eric Carlson not necessarily get his goal, but I'd like to see him doing better than a minus nine with seven assists in 14 games. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a superstar. Make no mistake about it. He's not playing like one necessarily right now on the stat sheet, but we've seen flashes of brilliance with him out on the ice. We saw him do a nice little dangle in the defensive zone Two players on him, I can't remember what the team was, but two players on him, and he does a nice little toe drag, just pulls it away, and it was very calm, and I think uh, that was his last game. It was yeah. the last game, yeah, and I think Hedekin had said, he's not off to the races, but he's got open space now, and he can mm -hmm. move, right? And if you really wanted to, yeah, he could have turned the Jets on and, and taken it, but maybe, you know, kind of last man back mentality, let's just move the puck up. Well, right? I was watching that game, and I was like, that was amazing. That yeah. That's kind of, um, I mean, they kind of highlighted it in the replay right, right afterwards, but when I was watching it live, I was like, he just did that. <laughs> Normally you see defensemen, they're under pressure like that. They're just going to dump the puck off the boards and get it out of the zone. And he just sidestepped and toe-dragged yeah. and completely opened up the space, opened up the ice, and made a, an ex exit pass, I guess, right. out of his zone. Uh, but he had a lot of time and space. And that that is the uh, the superstar in in Eric Carlson that you're seeing coming out. And I... I've seen like a couple of these flashes of brilliance yeah. um, during the 14 games, and it's unfortunate that he doesn't have those points because there's a couple times where he's done. You see that flash, mm -hmm. and either he dishes it off and someone can't finish it because they weren't expecting the pass, which right. they mentioned last week, or um, he just can't score. He's just snake bit. And I would love to see him in the next week or two get that monkey off of his back and get that goal. And I think what we'll see is uh, more confidence mm -hmm. um, in his game. I think right now it's a mental issue more than physical or um, even skill. So mm -hmm. I think um, once he gets that under his belt, he's going to mentally be a little bit better. He'll play more confident. Yeah. We're already seeing the more confidence in that move. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think he's going to be okay. And, and the coaching staff keeps talking about how it's it's a work in progress right. and he's going to get there. And I, I think we're starting to see it. And, and I think not so much that it's the way that Carlson goes is the way the team's going to go necessarily. Excuse me. But I feel like if, Carl, if Carlson can get going, the goals for are going to jump a little bit. The goals against are going to pull back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that differential is really going to start to shine, right? Um, so 
it's it's almost like the way that the whole season's kind of been going where you know we get good chances we're just not getting those bounces that's kind of how carlson's season's been going yeah the sharks have kind of broken out of that a little bit but carlson's still in that that period right now where he's still trying to get himself really going and i think once he does you're going to see again it's not the team goes the way carlson goes necessarily but i feel like you're going to see a better defensive all-around effort because he's got so many minutes i think is the main thing if he was playing a handful of minutes here or there okay it doesn't really affect it but he's right. out there a good majority of the time he's out there on the power play he's out there five and five all the time mm -hmm. so i think with him stepping his game up yes you're going to see the entire team playing better both defensively and offensively yeah i and i looked up the stat before the show tonight the sharks are uh, 10th in goals for in mm -hmm. the league and they're 15th in goals against. Right. So right in the middle for goals against. Uh, Jones is playing better. And defensively, once Carlson gets his game going, um, he, I mean, he's not the only defenseman, obviously. But right. once he gets going and, and that D really gets solidified, because DeBoer's been kind of shaking up the defensive pairings anyway. So um, once they kind of start gelling and, and really get moving, um, their goals against are going to be really, really good. So, or better. That's going to improve. Um yeah, uh, they have something to add there. No, I, I was <laughs> just saying. Um, like, I, I know that there are some other uh, pretenders that are above us in the standings as well, right? Yeah. So we're talking about goals against goals for differential and everything, and the Sharks kind of being right in the middle of that pack. And when we look at the Pacific Division, where the the Sharks right now are kind of in the middle of the pack, we take a look up and we see <laughs> these these uh, uh, what do you call it uh, Canadian teams? Yeah, Alberta teams. Yeah. And, you know, like you had mentioned, some of those those teams are pretenders. They're not yeah. really supposed to be there. But it's really too early to be looking at the standings and saying, you know, who belongs where. But if we are going to look at the standings and we look at these teams that are above, like you had mentioned in Vancouver, they lose mm -hmm. a guy, and they're not doing so good. Edmonton, they lose a guy, and they're not doing so good, right? Yeah. Whereas the Sharks, we've got the depth to work with. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to chime Yeah, in. definitely. Like, um, so what I alluded to earlier was, was about the depth of the Sharks. Sharks lost Thornton for most of the season mm -hmm. this year half the season maybe half the games um thornton's not their number one guy anymore but the sharks didn't tank either they have plenty of depth um they lose hurdle they might lose hurdle for a couple games right. they're not going to go under uh they could probably lose another one or two key players and still be able to hold their own yeah. so you look at vancouver vancouver right now Pedersen is the is the uh amazing rookie yeah. up there and he's missed i think four or five games from a concussion and vancouver is just not the same team when once he came back they were amazing um i don't see vancouver being a playoff team mainly because they have one guy and they also their goaltending is not great markstrom is not a <laughs> great goalie he's a good he's a good serviceable goalie but he should not be your your starting guy um they have a guy in the wings that's going to come up right. in a couple of seasons, but he's not there yet. Um, I just don't see Vancouver maintaining the play pace that they're at. Uh, they're going to regress, and I think they have a negative goal differential. Yeah. Um, and that's just it's going to come back to bite you eventually. Um, Calgary, I can see, is a little bit better. They, I think they have a little bit more depth. Yeah. Um, they have Johnny Hockey, but <laughs> he's... He, Johnny Gaudreau is not, you know, um, the only guy they have there. So uh, once they get their goaltending and, and defense, kind of like the Sharks yeah. in a way, get that figured out a little bit more solidified, they'll be better. Edmonton is kind of, uh, I want to say, like a crapshoot because they could be the Edmonton we saw two years ago right. where they beat the Sharks in the playoffs, or they could be the Edmonton last year when they almost were last place in the West. Mm -hmm. So um, And in both cases, Connor McDavid was healthy. Right? Yes. So yes. if Connor McDavid goes down, a, he scored more than 50% of the goals, right? <laughs> which is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, there he had a stretch of, uh, was it the first 10 or 11 games where he was in on every goal? Mm -hmm. that's, that's insane. So that obviously can't continue. <laughs> you need some support, right. um, secondary, third scoring, whatever. And um, they're kind of getting that. I mean, they're, they're getting better goaltending. Yeah. Uh, Cam Talbot's playing a lot better. So... Um, I just I I see Calgary as the stronger of those, and they are in the top right now. Mm -hmm. Edmonton would be to me second, and then Vancouver would be third. And it, you're going to see them drop. And we saw Anaheim on top of the division at the beginning of the season for yeah. the first couple of weeks, yeah, and we did. now they are trending down. And that's most likely yeah, 
you want to say something? No, there? I've said it. I've said it plenty of times. I don't need to say it again. Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and we're seeing them. The injuries are catching up to them, and they're they're starting to go underneath now, and not quite Kings. Right. Uh, dump that they're taking. Uh, they just fired their coach this week too. Yeah. So actually, that's some some pretty interesting news. We don't normally talk Kings news here, but right. this is kind of it's good um so they fired their head coach i can't even remember his name whatever doesn't matter yep. um and they have willie desjardins which i can't remember where i know that name but i know andrew desjardins but right. um willie for some reason sticks out and i've heard that name before he's taking over as a head coach and they brought in former shark Sturm yeah. as the assistant uh, head coach which is kind of cool a lot of people in the the king's fans saying that there's no way that they were able to pull marco away from where he was to give him an assistant coach job that look for him to be the head coach next season uh, as long as he can prove himself so that'd be kind of cool having you know marco Sturm as a head coach in the league i wish him nothing but bad luck being <laughs> the king's head coach but you know good good on him i, I suppose well, it's kind of like when tony granado coached for a while he was the coach of Colorado, I think it was. Yeah, but I don't I hate Colorado. Yeah. So. Yeah. True. I hate LA. Yeah. <laughs> it's the facts. That's yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, w yeah. let's jump into some line combinations. Sure. So we had seen, um, what was it, Jumbo, right? Do yeah. we want to start with Jumbo or do we want to start somewhere else? Uh, you want to start with Sumella? Yeah, we can start there. Let's start with Sumella. All right, because that's, yeah. that's kind of related. Okay. So Sumella uh, was benched. He was mm -hmm. scratched the last game. Um, people, I think, on. on the Twitter verse yeah. and everywhere yeah. else were, were social up. media. Yeah, they were, <laughs> you know, criticizing DeBoer and wondering why that's happening. And yeah. and to us, like we had talked about this uh, before even the Carlson trade earlier this season, this summer, where before the Carlson trade, we were talking about the fourth line being um, rotated around between Sumella, Gambrell, Gaudreau, and even Chartier. Yeah, um, was was up in our conversation. So. Um, once Tierney got traded, then it was the third and fourth line was going to get rotated. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's good for him to um, to see the game in mm -hmm. a different level up high in the press box. You, you get a different viewpoint. Um, that's part of it. You get some competition between mm -hmm. some of the guys, so they're going to be competing hard to, in order to make the starting lineup. Right. Um, I don't see it as a bad thing. It's it's a grind. He hasn't played more than was it fifty nine games? Fifty nine, yeah. So less in, than in 60. the Finnish league, right? Fifty nine games, NHL. yeah. In the Finnish league. So now you're talking about coming to the NHL and having to play eighty two games. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's such a bad thing to give a guy a night off, a healthy scratch. It it sounds worse than it is when you say healthy scratch. It makes yeah. it sound like he's not performing, and therefore we're going to teach him a lesson. Well, no, maybe the guy just needs a break. I mean, I think DeBoer had said it too, and I think Sumella agreed. He's kind of come to a point with his game right now where he's kind of plateaued, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. You're asking the guy to be the third-line center, right, in, in, in all traditional ways of numbering the lines. <laughs> and so, because I didn't, uh, didn't <laughs> low utilization, right. then is the fourth anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so so you, you're asking him to be this, this guy who's going out there for a good number of minutes a night. Well, he's maybe used to playing that number of minutes, but he's not used to that that type of grind just yet, right? Yeah. So I think it's okay to give the guy a night to stand back, recharge his body, take a look at from the press box and see how everything is played out, uh, you know, from a more strategic standpoint than being directly on the ice. It's not such a bad thing. It's not a demotion. It's not somebody shaking their finger at him because he's not doing well enough. It's just giving the guy a well-deserved break. And that's okay. Now, he hasn't scored a whole lot of goals or had many points over that stretch, so that's where the competition comes into play. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a healthy thing, and it's a normal thing. And again, like we had talked about, there's a revolving door, we feel, on those lines, right? Yeah. That we're going to allow these guys to come in, show what they can do, give them a break mm -hmm. uh, when he feels that they need it. And to DeBoer's credit, I guess, he knows his players a lot better than we do. Yeah. He may be suffering from an ailment that we don't know about. That's all speculation, right. obviously. I'm sure he's totally healthy and he just needs a little bit of a break so he gets out of this plateauing period. Well, players get banged up. You know, they're yeah. not injured. They just, they got bruises. They're, they're kind of sore. Sure. Like, they just, uh, not they don't have as much jump as they should mm -hmm. or normally do so they, you kind of give them a night off but i mean look at last year's team right how many guys played 82 games there's only a handful yeah at best three or four i think yeah, yeah. so that, it's like that every year so players get hurt they get scratched they get moved around and this happened to timo meyer last season this happened to um a couple other guys that that were healthy scratches and just mm -hmm. watch from the press box and learn yeah. you learn the game 
So uh, it's not a big deal. I think it got blown out of proportion. Yeah. And we'll see him back. We'll. S I think Sumela we're going to see more often than not. Um, it's just kind of a kick in the rear maybe a little. Plus, could you're, it could be rewarding the other guys that are working hard to get them in the lineup. It could be partly um, a matchup thing sure. depending on the yeah. teams. So, um, and jumping into where Jumbo joining, mm -hmm. you have a guy coming back who's healthy and... I think they started him on the Pavelski line, right? And then they moved him to the to the jumbo line, <laughs> if you want. Or, <laughs> so he centered Sorensen and uh, who was the other guy? It wasn't Goodrow. It was uh, Sorensen LeBanc. LeBanc. Yes. So um, you've got Jumbo centering. First of all, LeBanc is no slouch. Right. We've seen his skating ability. We've seen his shooting ability. We've seen his playmaking ability. Quite frankly, more pretty good. Than his yeah, shooting, yeah. Lately. Definitely more. I mean, you were almost complaining about it earlier mm -hmm. when we first started the show that maybe he was trying to do too much passing. Mm -hmm. They wanted him to shoot more, but he turns out he's a pretty decent playmaker. He's so. known for his shooting. Yeah, and we haven't seen much of it. That's that's the thing. Right. So it's almost like Jumbo is known for his passing, and he's been scoring <laughs> a lot of goals. It's like, well, I thought he was this great playmaker. He's supposed Other to be way this around. great yeah, scorer. For, yeah. Right. So, uh, they, and they switched roles. Uh, Jumbo scored a goal mm -hmm. uh, after a nice, beautiful zone entry and pass by LeBanc. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was supposed to be Jumbo centering Sorensen LeBanc. Well, Sorensen had gotten off and Couture had gotten on, I think, was what had happened because when Jumbo scored his goal, it was Couture that was on, on the ice as well. I think they were just in the middle of a change. Yeah. But let's go back to the point of all this, the lines, right? Jumbo, Sorensen, LeBanc. Then you've got the, the normal top two lines, the Pavelski line and the Couture line. Those guys were already rolling, doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. Now you've got this this center depth that goes across three lines. We had talked about this before. When Jumbo comes back, I wanted to be selfish about it and put him on the fourth, the low utilization line, yeah. right? Because Suomela was centering that other line. Well, that would give us four lines that have you know, studs all the way across that can play real well. Well, with Jumbo centering Sorensen and LeBanc, and then the other two lines that are rolling really well, I mean, those are three lines that can really, really score and really be dangerous. I don't think it's a bad thing. It's not a demotion in any way, sense, mm -hmm. or form. It's just having good talent spread all the way across. And Jumbo's already mentioned that he doesn't care. He's been around the league a long yeah. time. He's played the game a long time. He doesn't care where he's at. I think that's where he's at in his career is he wants to win a cup. Mm -hmm. He's going to do whatever it takes. He doesn't care what line he's going to be on. Um, as long as he's contributing and, and not hurting the team, and I don't, he, he's not quite healthy. He's not back to his normal yeah. self yet. That knee is still, and he's said it. He said he's, he hasn't felt, um, or there's some periods where it feels worse yeah. than others. So um, it's still going to take some time. Mm -hmm. Maybe like last year, it's going to take until the new year, and he's going to really feel back to normal and healthy again. Yeah. And again, like those knee surgeries, even the minor ones, you're going to lose a lot of that muscle mass in your leg. And it's... It's not easy to gain back. It's very easy to lose quickly, yeah. but to gain it back takes a long time. So um, he's going to get better. He's going to progress and, and get more strength back. Yeah. Um, but with Hurdle out now, there's another hole. Maybe we see Samella right. come back, and Thornton goes to that other line that Hurdle was on. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, a great problem for the Sharks to have. This just goes back to what we were saying earlier about their depth, where... Yeah. You have a guy or two guys out of the lineup, and you can fill those holes easily and still be a dangerous team. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I love it. Again, I, I love the depth that we have in this team. I love the way that we're, we're starting to trend. I think things are looking up. Um, by the way, if you wanted to, to read a little bit more uh, other other perspective on that, Kevin Kurz had his mailbag, and we brought this question up, and we actually made the mailbag again. I think yeah. it was like the third or fourth time we've made the mailbag. Yeah. So um, if you questions. have the chance, yeah, the good questions. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you get the chance, um, uh, give him a look because it's it's pretty good stuff too. Um, but I guess from there, maybe we'll just talk about kind of how we're feeling about the season in total. Again, we're. We're breaking into that 15 to 20 game mark. We're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. But I think right now what I'm seeing is the Sharks have kind of had this issue where we were having lots of shots on goal, lots of possession. Everything was going right, and we just couldn't bury the puck. And I think now we're starting to see a little bit more of a flip. We're starting to see us get those chances, get that puck luck, burying those shots, uh, putting the goals up on the board, right? Mm-hmm. 
I, I think you're going to start seeing that kind of leveling out, as we've said, um, not retooling. Market was, correction. A, a market correction, mm -hmm. thank you. So I think we're starting to see that. Yeah. But there are certain things we're going to see they're going to correct themselves as well. Timo Meyer, for instance, he's on pace for how many goals? 60-something <laughs> goals. <laughs> not right. as many as Evander Kane would have if he stayed out of the penalty box, just right. saying. Right, jeez. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, Timo's going to regress. He's shooting over 20%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and most people shoot about 10%. Right. He's And this is, again, in, in one of Curse's articles about um, he's going to regress a little bit. It's, it's going to come down. He's going to score less goals. He'll probably hit a wall. Um, but he's shooting a higher percentage shot yeah. or higher dangerous, more dangerous right. shots than he was last year. So I don't think he's going to drop to 10% and just, you know, just have a big drop in goals, but right. uh, maybe he's going to shoot at 13, 14, 15 percent, which would be really good. Yeah. Um, so we'll see a little bit of that. Uh, we're also, as we said earlier, Carlson's not playing like he should be right now. Um, I think the story so far in these 14 games, lately in the last two weeks, it's been more of the Sharks not playing a full 60 minutes. Yeah. We're seeing one period or two periods of great hockey and then one or two periods of them just taking a break, yeah. taking a back seat, and just going through the motions. So I think um, this is why DeBoer is is changing things up in the lines and the defensive pairings and everything, mixing it up, trying to prod his players and trying to get that production and, and getting them to commit to a full 60-minute game. Right. And we've seen what happens when they have a full 60-minute game, when they play well. It's devastating. The Philadelphia yeah. earlier game, where yeah. they just destroy everyone. So we know the potential's there. Uh, we know there's some guys that aren't performing up to where they should be, mm -hmm. but um, I think so far the season's all right. Yeah, I'm okay with it. And if we go back to looking at these other teams, specifically those Canadian teams, we feel that they're pretenders. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to fall back down a little bit. And if any of those teams have an injury to one of their major players, like a McDavid or a Pedersen, right? Yep. Um, season's over, right? Uh, with the Sharks, like you said, if we have an injury, a guy goes down, we're not in a really bad hole. Yes, we're missing right. a very good player, maybe, potentially, but we've got lots of depth in that team. I mean, pick one top, pick two top players. Sure. Couture, out for three months. That sucks, actually. Sucks, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. we'd survive. Yeah. Burns goes out, or Carlson goes out. One or, one or, not both, right. but one or the other. Yeah. We'll be okay. Like, it, it's, everything is covered. Even Jones goes out. Aaron Dell is a very capable goalie. That's true. So we are completely covered uh, with depth. You know who else who could back up Dell if need be? Hmm. Bebo. Bebo. Yeah. <laughs> He's been playing lights out. He's in playing for Barracuda. Phenomenal. Yeah. So the future is very bright, and uh, the depth is unreal. I think this is this might be the deepest team we've seen. The the one thing I, I wanted to bring up was if there is an injury and it's not a long-term injury, not long-term IR, but long enough to put someone on the IR. You've only got so many people that are allowed on that roster. And right now you've got Heat and Shimmick who cannot be pushed down to the AHL without being picked up by another team. They have to clear waivers. And mm -hmm. I just don't think that's going to happen. I think another team's going to pick up either one of those guys. Especially defensemen. Right. Yeah. Um, then you've got uh, Chartier, who's kind of been the odd man out, but he's been getting his games in too. Mm -hmm. But you can't move him down either, right? Because he'll get snagged. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of, this is your lineup right now. Uh, these are the guys that you're going to have on your team, period. If somebody goes down with a long-term injury, this is why you saw Dylan Gambrell jump in, was because Joe was out on the IR. It opened up a roster spot. Gambrell is able to come in. Mm -hmm. Joe's back. Gambrell's not going to be able to come up and play. He's going to stick down with the AHL unless somebody else gets injured. So Because his contract allows him to go back and forth. Exactly. Yeah. So right now what you have is a situation where the players that you have, barring an injury that goes on the IR or LTIR, you're, these are your players. That's it. So one forward goes down, you've got Chartier who can step in, or if it's Carlson that's sitting that day or whoever, right? Mm -hmm. One player that can step in. Like you just said, we're going to be okay. Even if we had two injuries and we can't bring any, anybody else in because of the player limit, mm -hmm. we're still going to be able to play with 11 forwards and maybe seven defensemen and still be able to win games. I don't think those other teams are going to be able to handle that. No. I don't think they have the depth that we have to be able to step in and handle it, even with the restrictions that we have because of the, the type of contracts that we have. Mm -hmm. So I think we're in a very good position, injury or no injury, and I think we have the longevity and the depth to go deeper than these other teams, like you said, these pretenders. So 
I'm really uh, confident on the season. I'm, I'm really uh, I'm stoked to see where we're going to go. I think the next week or two when we get to that 15-20 game mark, because we're at 14 now, is going to be a little bit telling. But I, I'm just I'm optimistic. Thanksgiving, I think, is a good point. Sure. That's around the 20 game mark. Yeah. Um, and we're going to see a lot of home games in November. So I think you're going to see good point. what the Sharks can do. There's less travel for them. They're going to have a big home stand. I think they can string together a bunch of wins. And uh, by Thanksgiving time, maybe not the top of the Pacific, but either, well, either first or second, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Top two, I think. Sure. Assuming they string them together. Well, Unless you know... what look really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else is happening uh, right around Thanksgiving time, right? Turkey? We will be finally giving away... The Google Home. Correct. That is when, the, you, know, you want to pull that out? Yeah. So we hit 1,000 subscribers. Thank you all so yes. much. Love Thank and support. You. Love you. it. Thank you so much. Um, we've, uh, like I said, we hit our 1,000. So we're going to have a link down below here, which you won't be able to click on, but that'll just pause the video. Uh, but <laughs> in the description down below, we'll have an actual hyperlink. And that'll take you to our raffle of sorts, right? Yeah. So you can... Uh, follow that. Same thing that we did last time for the hat. There's entries, ways of you getting extra entries and whatnot. Uh, you need to be a subscriber, obviously. Uh, why wouldn't you be anyway? <laughs> uh, so you can basically win this from us, and the way you can win this is by making those entries, and it will be given away, I believe, on the 25th, so right after right Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. So it would make a great gift. <laughs> <laughs> why, why buy it a on Black Friday? A Thanksgiving you, gift? Black Friday. I guess. Okay, sure. The day after yeah. Thanksgiving. Why not? Anyway, uh, if, again, if you'd like us to sign it or something, we'll happily do that. Eric. Oh, we'll don't. definitely sign the box. <laughs> we won't sign the Google Home. Maybe we'll slap a sticker on there. Uh, the other thing we're going to announce is our store will be open soon. Yes. And we'll be getting merchandise. So we'll have three men's T-shirts or women, mm -hmm. it's, it, whoever wants to wear them. Black. And specifically a women's T-shirt that has a V-cut. Right. Yeah. So we'll have, we have three shirts. That one's black, one's gray, and one's teal. So we have a women's v-cut black shirt and then we'll have hats and the hats have their black hats with a teal brim on it and it's got our logo right in the middle and they're snap back so we don't have to worry about the sizing issues larges and smalls and everything else yep. it should just fit your head so don't so worry be about on the that. lookout for that It'll be in the coming weeks uh, we'll have it up on our website and we'll send the link one out. more thing i want to say about the hat um, our producer super producer jason uh stoked about the stitching yeah. <laughs> apparently the stitching is super fluffy yeah uh, enough to make the stay puff marshmallow man jealous i'm guessing so right. yeah. that or, or sean combs either way uh, very puffy <laughs> on on the hat loving it so nice. uh he's stoked i'm stoked can't wait to get it uh, anything else you want to say about the store? Uh, no. I don't know it'll be up when it'll running. be up. Maybe we'll get it up earlier and we can take some pre-orders before we actually get the merchandise. That'd be great, yeah. So, yeah, we'll be on the lookout for that. So, um, different ways for for you guys. I know we've been getting questions about how can we support the channel, and this is just one way that we're, we're doing it. I know it's, it's coming very late. We're already at episode 21, and yeah. we're finally getting our store going. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that's one way you'll be able to uh, support the, the show is by getting some merch. Another way is uh, during our YouTube live segments, which we record before taping for this, Yeah, um, you can do a super, what is it Super called? chat. Super chat yeah. through YouTube. <laughs> um, so if you don't know what that is, don't even worry about it. But if you know what that is, that's another way you can support us. Um, and please join us for those live segments. Uh, next week we'll be on on Monday. Yes. Just like we were today. Yeah. So um, it's either Monday or Sunday. We'll figure it out. If you subscribe to us and click the... Uh, alert button you will know yeah. when it gets up so yeah, yeah we enjoy doing that because we can live chat with interact with you guys and that's a ton of fun if you've not gone yeah. to the live chat please jump in there's chat going on just textually and there's also us just going back and forth and it's it's a ton of fun mm -hmm. so i think that brings us to the end of episode number 21 blackjack there you go ah. so, that's a good one yeah, <laughs> i thought this were gonna go with it anyway yeah. uh thanks for tuning in Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, at The Fin Factor, on Instagram, at Fin Factor. I'm always out there at the Sharks Practices uh, with uh, little tidbits and whatnot, so follow us on that. Yeah, say hi to Paul. He'll give you a sticker. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Please come up to me. I am not a superstar. I will happily give you a sticker. <laughs> Very good. So uh, we will see you guys next week. Next week. Stay classy, San Jose. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.